Let's get good. This is Endless Space 2, and we are playing as the virtual saint worshipping, or rather the virtual saints who worship the virtuals, the Vidyani. When we last left off, we were struggling pretty hard with this pirate contract that keeps being renewed on Bracia, which, by the way, is back. Uh, I'm reasonably sure we just bought it off before we saved, and all of a sudden it's back again. So, while I, I do suspect that that may just be the Umbra Choir putting that contract out again, I also wonder if it just refreshed it because we saved and loaded in the middle of a turn, and if that's the case, that's kind of annoying. Um, that being said, though, it is okay because we did go ahead and make the upgrade to Dayard where we have the meditation module so that this ship has to be invaded. They can't just attack it. And our economic behemoth is returning right now to help defend the system. Currently, it's specced out with this, the Blessed Salvager, that will allow it to gain essence from a destroyed planet, but when we get it back there, we're going to fit it up with some more weapons and use it to help fend the pirate threat off of this system. Now, we cannot afford to buy out this pirate contract, so we're not even going to try at this point. I think instead, what we'll probably end up doing here is, for one, we want to go in and try to use our alliance tools to place a defense order here and see if our allies will come in and help protect Bracia. Worst case scenario, what we'll do is we'll upgrade Bracia to a movement arc, un unanch unanchor it, and then bounce it home. Uh, that That is our worst case, though. We don't really want to do that, but there is a pirate system right here, so as long as they keep placing these pirate marks, Bracia is going to be under threat. Uh, the other solution, of course, is to eliminate the choir. If we eliminate the choir, then if it is them placing the pirate marks, they're not going to be placing them anymore. So that is definitely our go-to strategy right now, uh, which we should actually be pretty pretty close to doing, in all honesty. Like, whatever they've got left, they're bringing to their home system, and we are bringing much worse. I guarantee you that. We are bringing much worse to their home system. So for right now, I think that's really everything we can do this turn. Although, one thing we potentially could do here is fire off a probe. Now, I don't think this will reveal it if it is there, but maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe it will reveal whether there's a transmigration beacon there. I doubt it. But uh, it would be nice to know where their migration beacon is so that if they do try to migrate out, we can go find them and take them out. I basically had enough of the Umbra Choir already. All I was trying to do was find them because we knew they were up there and we knew they were hacking us. But then we found them and it turned into this, and now they're just kind of asking for it. Uh, okay. You guys are fine, we just want you to stay here. Why does it even tell me that they're, like, free to do whatever when we really just... Okay. Just hang out here until next turn when you can shoot them some more. Wait, 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 why do we have somebody leaving? Oh, I think this fleet was retreating to go heal up. No, they weren't retreating to go heal up. We were sending them down here, which is gonna take eight turns. There's absolutely no point in doing that, actually. Uh, eight turns is way too many. By the time it gets there, that system will be way, way hurt. I'm just going to keep them here. It makes more sense to just keep them here and use them as reinforcements for the invasion. While we're at it, though, we could consider producing something to defend Bracia in Bracia. That's not a bad idea. The question is, what do we want to produce here? So if we make one anti-armor here, it is going to take quite a few turns. We do not have 73k to buy it out. Like, that's not even an option right now. However, what would be an option? What could we put out here that could potentially help protect the system? Uh, not so cardboards would take how long now? Three turns. <clears throat> Sorry guys, my throat's a little messed up this morning. I think I might be catching a cold. Uh, but don't worry about it, we're still gonna have episodes. We're still gonna have episodes. So, let's see. Not so cheap, he's still too expensive to really build out here. What if AI labor was finished very soon? Hmm. I feel like we might do this and then start building ships here to help defend this system. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Other than that, I don't think we have anything else going on. Uh, we do have a hack available, so we should definitely look at what we want to do with that. I wonder if... Yes. Yes. Hack that system and get rid of their sanctuaries. Burn them to the ground. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to start poking at the choir in every way we possibly can. Uh, what we don't want to do is anger anyone or cause any more trouble because we can't be in a two-front war right now. 
No, we're not going to make a diplomatic demand right now. We're, we're going to keep everything cool. Uh, we do have a hero who is unassigned. That is our guardian hero. Perhaps we assign him here, although this, this ship is now just an arc because of that meditation module. It can't actually commit to combat. Um, I think we're going to assign him to this fleet when it lands right here. I think that's the idea. So yeah, he's going to be free of any assignment for one turn. It's not the end of the world. It'll be fine. Fire is just bugging me here. If we lose the arc at Bracia, I'm just going to be angry and the choir is going to feel that rage. That's what's going to happen. Oshi has been hacked. I believe that is their capital. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Lots and lots of things to look at here. Uh, so we are going to steal a technology from them for sure. We're probably just going to look for whichever one has the highest science cost and take that. Vacuum protect uh, protection here would be the answer. However, that is primarily just support modules. It doesn't give us anything but support modules, so I'm not sure that's actually what we want. Uh, colonized steps could be a little bit more useful. The food techs here are not going to be useful really at all for us. But this one right here with colonized steps actually could be pretty useful. So we'll go ahead and take that. I think that's the best option for us. Uh, congratulations! We completed machine bacteria and we are working on shaft to shelf system which is that wonderful, wonderful production improvement that does require Quadrinix, but it is a huge boost to production. Population bonus has ended for the Vodiani. No, it hasn't. Uh, we're going to keep that up, keep our economy pumping. We are not the ones with the trade company producing the most dust in the galaxy after 10 turns. That's okay. Not the end of the world. A, we get plus 20 happiness. The rest of the spies create something of a scandal, but during the public trial, you skillfully, or your skillful political testimony convinces the majority of your population that your government is a shining beacon of light in a sea of darkness. I mean, we are the virtual saints, though, right? The subsequent execution of the spies demonstrates that despite being bound by the truth, you are no soft touch either. Lovely. Uh, we are now at Cold War with the Lumeris. That's fine, we just don't want to be at War War with the Lumeris. That would be kind of bad right now. And we have some level ups to do. Ruthian F11 Tigian is leveling up, which is great. We really want to get to here for him. That's going to be a huge boost for us. Uh, percentage based... Hmm, I'm actually going to go with this because percentage based influence gains are great, but flat gains are a little bit better, I think we've found over time. Plus the combination of the two isn't dreadful. Getting a little more flat gains from this and then the additional... We're going to get both of those eventually anyway. I actually probably should have gone for Public Relations Expert before even going for Lucky Windfall, though. Mainly because those percentage boosts don't always end up being as much as you'd like them to be. Um, Alright, Pi has leveled up. Pi is incredible. We actually really, really like Pi. What do you have to offer us, Pi? Pi should probably get happiness because he's not going to get the, uh, the bomb there, the Joy Initiative. So instead, we'll just give him transformational leadership here. That's going to be better than expansion disapproval reductions or necessarily science right here. Uh, science is powerful, don't get me wrong, but happiness is way more powerful. Uh, so we'll get happiness there, and then with... I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. There's absolutely no point. I'm going to go ahead and take the second level of science here, mainly because we don't need the happiness. We'll be getting joy initiative. I could get food here as well, but food is less optimal for us since we cannot terraform planets. It's essentially just that we can't use food to make biofuel as consistently as another faction can, so food isn't as much of a priority. Mikre is doing public 3D printing. Is that the best usage of your time? It does not look like it is, considering there is the availability to build another behemoth. Uh, do we have one in queue somewhere? I think we might have one in queue on our home system. Let's go take a look. Do sing is our home system. I'm just going to bounce around and make sure we don't have a behemoth in queue anywhere. Yeah, I guess we don't. Uh, so that gives us something to build on Mikre. And I think what we'll do here is we'll go for a military behemoth. And we're going to make this thing fast. We're going to make this thing very, very fast. The hope being that we can get it over to Bracia and reinforce Bracia in short order. Uh, so let's go ahead and give it all the engines we can fit on it, which is not many. Wow, that's actually really sad. Um, with so few support slots, I almost feel like we'd be better off building an Econ Behemoth and fitting it for military usage. 
Like, we get so many more support slots here. However, we don't get as many weapon slots. So that that's the trade-off, essentially. Although, I guess that... That is kind of fair, though, when you think about it, because most of our military ships can only afford enough support slots for two engines. Uh, in this case, that'll work out just fine. We'll go ahead and do that. We'll go with two support slot engines, and then everything else will just deck out for combat. So let's get our armor slots here. Can I go a little bit heavier on our energy defenses here, just because in general, I feel like the... Uh, Major factions prefer those. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, we have enough slots to balance them, which is nice. Uh, and then if we go to weapons, because we have, like, general, or not general, but admiral boost to laser damage and stuff, and we could potentially position this as a juggernaut later, I'm going to try to stick to energy weapons here. Although we do have access to squadrons now as well, and squadrons are quite useful. Um, not so much useful against medium-sized ships, like, they're really not as good against that, I don't think. Yeah, DPS modifier is 50% against small. Okay, so it's actually good against medium. They're actually solid against medium ships, they're just not very good against small ships. Uh, and even this one, it, like, the, the fighters are not actually great against small ships. I feel like the fighters are primarily good for, once again, just trying to peel off other bombers. That being said, I doubt the pirates are gonna use bombers that much, so we don't really need to focus on that. Uh, let's put a beam in our biggest slot, that way we get a nice bit of beam damage there. And then we'll put a couple lasers in our other slots. Pretty solid. Honestly, not necessarily the best military ship in our empire, but at the same time, as a one-off ship that can rush out there to try to save the day, it should be perfect. Science and Exploration 5 has been unlocked, that gives us access to the antimatter engine. Uh, if we had the antimatter to use that, that actually is potentially better than scavenge ram scoops once again those scavenge ram scoops for the resource cost is probably the best engine in the game in my opinion uh, dark matter institute deep epoch scanning so we do actually have access to deep epoch scanning now which is good we should start putting some scanners out so that we can find those tier 3 resources in our empire population growth has occurred in a whole bunch of places we should go look at our empire though and see who is in need of potentially a holy proliferation the answer to that is nobody Everybody is either getting pop in one turn or maxed out, which is lovely, that's what we want to see. That means that we can potentially start putting this essence into another arc. Although we are very much close to the essence cap, and we're going to go over by a considerable amount, which means that we could retrofit some arcs. However, at the current time, our dust income is not what I would like it to be to do that. Although we do have enough, it looks like, to buy out that pirate mark here. We do. We have enough to buy out that pirate mark. I'm not sure that that's even necessary here. Well, if this guy lands and gets wrecked, we're going to not be having a very happy time. Uh, he should have more than enough power to deal with these guys, though. Yeah, he should be fine. Okay, choices, choices. I think we buy this out for right now. I mean, I don't know if we can sustain buying this out, but I think buying it out for right now isn't a terrible idea. Yeah, let's cut the pressure. Let's cut the pressure a little bit. Let's get those pirates out of there. Uh, hopefully they'll actually leave. I mean, I don't know how the pirate AI works. They might just be like, okay, the contract's off, but there's still loot here, so let's keep going. That is entirely possible. Uh, okay. The backtrace from Primus is coming, however, I don't know if it'll complete before we hit Primus, because I think we're just one turn out. Yeah, that, that actually means we should be able to hit them before they hit us back. Uh, more importantly, though, let's blow up some Umbral Choir ships. So here they've got their flagship, and then a bunch of primarily energy ships that are strongest at medium range. Let's see what we can do here. We do have this nice, hefty arc that is going to be bringing the pain. Uh, Probably best to put it in the middle here. They do actually have their own carrier with them. The Ark, though, in my opinion, a bit superior to a carrier. Actually, no, their carrier has more health, uh, less damage, and more armor. Okay, so fairly even with a carrier here, but we do have bombers with us. They have bombers as well. Uh, this is something I actually wanted to look at. Supposedly, and I, I can't remember, I think it was you, Double Bullfrog that told me this, but I'm not sure. Supposedly, there is actually, like, an element to these strategy cards that determines what your bombers and your other ships will do. 
but I'm still not seeing anything like that. So I don't know if I'm just missing it or what's up with that. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, so one thing we do want to keep in mind is that this is the one fleet that's going to go into sort of short range and we really don't want that many ships over there because whatever ships end up over there are basically just going to be there to present a flotilla advantage. Now that being said, maybe we move our hero ship back over here. I think I like this arrangement the best. Uh, there is a very real chance though, like looking at their past options, they're probably going to stay... Well, they seem to favor medium, which makes sense considering they're mostly lasers. So if they go medium here, then they'll be using the same exact strategy as we are, only a little bit closer. It's not the same strategy, but it's roughly the same formation, which means that we would, in theory, be able to come in behind them with this strategy. I like this strategy for it, I just don't know... Hmm. I guess we'll see how this pans out. I'm mostly just concerned about where they're going to put their... Yeah, see, that's that's what I was concerned about. They're going to stack everything on top here. Uh, they are using the exact same strategy we are, but they're stacking everything on top. Which seems kind of foolhardy. Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily a good plan, but I guess we'll find out here. Ooh, okay. Okay. So this is going to be interesting because I'm not sure if our third fleet here is even going to be able to deal damage to them. However, the good news is that our arc and a lot of our damage are in that middle fleet right there, which means that they will be able to do damage and it will be relatively focused in on their largest ship. That's what we want. Come on, guys. You can do it. You can do it. And this, like, throwaway flotilla right here, they're just going to be eating a lot of damage. So it's really just a matter of how long they can hold out and keep giving us the flotilla advantage here. It does look like this third flotilla is able to do some damage. Not sure how much, though. Like, they're firing, though. They are firing on the uh, carrier here. Come on. Damage that carrier. Blow that thing up. It's at about half health here. We are grinding it down. So far... Uh-oh. We're getting the sound issue again. Sorry about that, everybody. I don't know why that... It seems to only trigger in tactical view as well. Which is really weird. Uh, we're going pretty even here. If we blow up that carrier, though, we're not going to be even at all. Come on. Come on. Oh, they are getting real close to taking out our arc, though. Oh, they just did. They just did. The arc is gone. Okay, so that's a minor defeat. Man, that was rough. That was rough, and it was mainly just because they stacked all of their ships on top. So, I'm thinking that the reason they stacked all of their ships on top is because that's the medium range one. I was trying to sort of make sure we stayed at a little bit more of a distance. Hmm. Crossfire, although someone did say Crossfire is always at long range. So maybe it just made more sense to stack everybody in that medium slot where we get the most damage. I think I just made bad decisions as a, as a admiral there. And they're also full lasers where we're beams, and we get a little bit more from being at long range. Uh, absorbed by your shields, absorbed by your hull plating. So we did absorb a lot of damage. Actually, almost double the damage they absorbed. Uh, they got a lot of damage out of their bombers. Did we not? We had bombers as well, we just didn't get much damage out of them. Interesting. Uh, we actually lost all of our bombers. Now, what I wonder is, did we lose all of our bombers to... See, that's that's what's curious. Did we lose all of our bombers to their projectiles? Or did their fighters actually deal with the bombers? Hmm. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Trying to figure that out is, is actually one of the bigger issues. Damage received from their kinetics, damage caused by your kinetics. So we had kinetics too, and our kinetics apparently didn't deal with the fighters at all. The bomber and fighter combat mechanics are definitely something that eludes me. I'm not entirely sure how that works, and I don't know. If you guys know more about how the bomber fighter combat mechanics work, let me know, because it's it's definitely something that's been hard for us to like 
compensate for and actually make work correctly. Uh, and that is absolutely frustrating. Okay, so let's see if we can... We could then attack with this fleet as well. How much strength do they have left? That's the bigger question here. Quite a bit. Like, we, we actually didn't really tear them up at all. Uh, could we put some fleet or some ships from this fleet over in this fleet and still be able to attack? That's a better question. No. No. The minute we move that ship over, we're no longer able to attack with that fleet. Okay. Hmm. Restore the Ark that has been destroyed. This will take one turn. Wait, what? We can rebuild an Ark here for 75 dust plus retrofit? Uh, okay. How does that work? Wrecked Ark. Oh, wow. Okay, that's a lot of dust. That is a lot of dust. Uh, so we would need to spend a lot of dust to restore that arc, which is crazy. We're not going to do that. Instead, I think what we'll do is we'll go take a look at our arc design and just prepare for our next combat arc. Oh, we still have a combat arc design up. That's right. Okay. So, yeah, I don't I don't know how the bombers work. That's that's honestly a, a source of minor frustration. Can't make another arc until... Well, we have maxed out resources. Why can't we make another arc? Cannot afford the resource cost. Oh, okay. We're shy on titanium? How are we shy on titanium? No, we're shy on hyperium. Okay. So with hyperium being an issue here, we could purchase some hyperium. Uh, we only need 10 more. Let's see what that would cost. More than we have. That's what that would cost. However convenient is that. Uh, Gossamer could potentially be sold here for a little bit of money. Not nearly enough, though. Yeah, that's that's not going to do enough for us at all. How much can we get for titanium? Can we get enough? Yeah, we can get enough from selling some titanium. Let's go ahead and do that just so that we can push out another combat arc here. And this is a combat arc, correct? Or is this our other arc design? That is Arc 32, which is not the one that I think we want to... Is that correct? Oh, it is. Okay. No, 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 no. No, this is not correct. Let's make a new combat arc, because I did find out we can do separate arc designs here. So we're going to call this the Combat Arc. I don't know what that sound effect in the background was. That sounded bad, though. Um, let's go ahead and load up on... Well, we can look at pure defense, but I think looking at our support modules first is going to be more valuable. So we want at least two speed modules here. Otherwise, we can also take some nice combat modules. Uh, repair modules are not bad here. Additional damage modules are also not bad. Anti-cloakers not really necessary, I don't think. Hmm. So let's go at least one damage module. At least... Well, I mean, honestly, we could go more movement here as well. At least one repair module. We could do a couple of repair modules. It's crazy that we have so many excess support slots here. Even if we dedicate every slot that's available as something else, we have so many support slots. I wonder if there's just a better way to use these that I'm not seeing. I mean, we can definitely use them for essence draining. I think using those slots to drain essence makes a lot of sense here. Um, okay. So now let's look at armor and some more defensive pieces. Lovely. We can rock a lot of defense here. Very much a fan of having all those defense modules. Uh, let's see what we can do with weapons. We do have some squadron slots. Last time we brought plasma bombers, they didn't seem to do a whole lot. I'm going to bring them again, but I think this time on weapons, we're going to focus more on going... Hmm. Beams are not ideal, I don't feel like. I'm gonna go for straight-up lasers here instead of beams. We'll just... 
rely on our heavy defenses to get into short range and then open up with our lasers. Although I do feel like maybe we want at least one projectile weapon here just so that we have some flak for those bombers that are going to be coming in on us because those bombers did significant damage and so far we don't really have a countermeasure. I may actually throw on some fighters just in case. Like let's throw fighters on and see if it does any good. Uh, I really don't understand the fighter versus bomber mechanics. I thought the idea was that fighters would target bombers. Oh boy. They've decided to do the attacking for us. Not sure how they get to attack a second time, but okay. I mean, that, I guess, works. Hmm. So, based on what we know from last time, we really want to do this. We really want to stack our damage in this top slot. Uh, and maybe leave the rest... I mean, we did also see that, no, 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 we want to stack our damage in this top slot. There's no argument there. Um, there really isn't. The bottom line is that crossfire is at long range, we want to be at medium range, so we really want to stack our damage at that top slot. The other option is we could use a tactic like this, where we have shield penetration on weapon modules, and instead we could stack all of our fleets on this bottom slot. That would actually allow them to sort of stay super long range from anything they put in the top slot, too. Let's try that. Let's try that. We may end up losing horribly here, but this is about experimentation. Let's give it a shot and just see what happens. Alright, that works. This is probably gonna end horribly. It very much could just end horribly. Oh, it's for both fleets. Well, that's not cool. I probably should have read that. This is going to end horribly. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I thought we would be able to use that to kind of counteract their defenses. Doesn't look like that's the case. Oh boy. This was a bad idea. However, we are going to be out of their arc with this fleet. Like, they shouldn't even be able to shoot at this fleet. Which is ideal, because that's our highest damage fleet. Uh, we're not seeing a whole bunch of damage come their way right now. Well, I mean, we're, we're getting some hits in. It doesn't look like they're chunking or anything, though. And we're definitely chunking in this fleet. We're chunking very badly. Are you serious? Like, it's like we're doing no damage whatsoever. None. I... Pff, okay. Are we even doing damage to you? It's like 300 damage per volley, and I don't understand why. Is it because we're using beams? Are beams just that terrible? And, like, I didn't realize it or something. Because we're, yeah, we're just not doing much damage at all. Still trying to just take that, that big carrier out. Wait, wait, wait. Will we get it? Will we get it? Come on, guys. Fire. Do it. Do it. Oh, we got it. Okay, at least we took the carrier out. I mean, I guess that's a, a worthwhile trade. We traded a couple of medium supports for a carrier there. I'm kind of okay with that. Man, that's crazy. Okay, I do want to see the advance here, though. So, we destroyed a couple of their bombers and fighters this time. I'm wondering if that's because we were actually in range to use our projectile weapons here. That seems like maybe that was the, the difference maker. Damage caused by bomber units. The bomber's main objective is to cause... Okay, so... In this case, their bomber units caused a lot less damage. Their lasers cost a lot more, and beams are just garbage. <laughs> that, that's what I'm drawing from this, is that beams are just garbage. Uh, they had a lot more missed shots than we did, too. Okay, so that didn't end up as horrible as I thought. Technically, it was still a minor defeat, but our losses are not even comparable to theirs in that particular confrontation. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and try to merge up these fleets a little bit here just to provide a slightly stronger fleet as opposition. Lovely. I can live with that. That's perfectly fine. Uh, and en route right now, we do have our anti-armor carriers. In fact, if they land quickly enough... Battle at Bracia. Lovely. That is our Econ Behemoth versus some pirates. Uh, this is going to be very interesting. What type of weapons do we have on our Econ Behemoth here? I believe that it's primarily beams. Yeah, it's beams. 
Okay, so it being beams and them having what types of weapons? Lasers. The ideal thing for us is shield absorption here to increase our our absorption of damage essentially while allowing us to continually use our beams. Beams are going to have a steady stream of damage. They're just not going to do as much damage. Uh, we should be able to pop that pincer pretty easily as well as that poacher. This proton ship right here will represent an actual complication though. Uh, okay, we can... We can watch this one real quick. Uh, I do want to see if our anti-armors get there, though. I really, really want to see our anti-armors go crazy. Okay. Do this thing, guys. Come on. Just survive, actually. that That's all I want from this is just survive. Let's get to the action. I just need you to survive, Behemoth. That's your entire job here is just to live. Just live and you'll be fine. That's all I ask. Please. We can't afford another loss right now. We really can't. Uh, the Umbral Choir is absolutely bringing it. Okay, that's that's good. That's better. Lovely. Lovely. That is excellent. We'll take that. Uh, the Umbral Choir is absolutely bringing it right now. They're not holding back at all, which is fine. Like, I don't want them to hold back, but they are really kicking our stuff in. And another fight on Bracia. We're not going to watch this one. We'll just go ahead and have it sim. Uh, we'll use the same strategy because it is a good strategy. Decisive victory. Cool. We cleared those pirates off pretty easily. And now the fun begins. Because now we're on their home system with our anti-armor carriers. They're going to have a bad time. They're going to have a bad time. Oh, and they can't even defend with that combat fleet. Apparently, we're just going straight after a behemoth. Now, they could theoretically retreat. But I wonder if we actually... I can't remember if we put modules on to stop retreat. However, we do seem to be primarily energy versus, or I mean primarily laser versus uh, beams here, which is going to be very useful. Yeah, this is going to be a different ball game entirely. Uh, and what we're going to do here is just stack everything. We know that because this is a behemoth, they have to stay in the middle lane. So we're just going to put one in, or we're going to stack everything in the top lane, which will get to medium range. And put one up here in the bottom just to give us the flotilla bonus, and this should be glorious. Provided they don't just retreat here, they're just going to retreat here. Okay, well, can't do anything about that. So we do have two fleets up here ready to tear them apart, which is lovely. We do have our invasion fleets moving up there to help us actually invade and finish that system off. Ooh, and it looks like there's a battle for control of Esh going on, which is interesting as well. Can we repair this thing? We cannot right now. That's okay. We're just going to have it sit here and chill for a minute. Worst comes to worst, we can upgrade that Econ Behemoth. I think we did the design for the Econ Behemoth as a combat vessel, but we never actually... No, we did a military, that's right, okay. Couldn't remember if we did an Econ Behemoth and then didn't put it in queue. If that was the case, it would have been... Why is there a defense marker there? I wanted it here, game. Right here. Okay, thanks. Um, okay. Doing okay here, though. We did lose a couple of ships here, but they lost a carrier, which I'm totally okay with. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to go ahead and give us a like or subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time. Bye!